Hey YouTube, this is Robonats1 here, and today I have for you episode 16, Dead to Rights. This episode explains more about Malcolm Merlin's backstory and character. It also sees China White and a group of mercenaries, including Deadshot, attempt to kill him. Also, Oliver reveals his secret in this episode. In the flashbacks, we see Oliver try to get a radio to work. He and Slade learn that the mercenaries are preparing to shoot down a plane, or they are starting to... or they are preparing for some kind of war. This episode is also written by Jeff Johns, a comic book writer well known for his work on Green Lantern books, and he's very versed in DC characters. Johns manages to write a sympathetic villain in this episode, highlighting his personal tra tragedies that led him down a path of villainy. We see Merlin through several eyes in this episode, the first being Moira. The second is Tommy's, and we also get um, how he sees himself as well. Merlin lost his wife in the Glades, and sees that in order to save his city, he has to eradicate the Glades. In some ways, Merlin parallels Batman in many ways. Merlin went travelling as Bruce Wayne does and meets a man who trains him, inspiring him to save his city. Merlin is a twisted version of Batman and is what Bruce would have become if he allowed himself to be overcome by grief. Merlin has the influence to change his city. Like Bruce does, and Merlin is actually very, very, takes that to the extreme. Tommy, in this episode, finds himself glimpsing into his father's, and now Oliver's, world. Tommy is enjoying his birthday until his father arrives to invite him to see him win an award. Tommy learns that his father is more than what he appears to be. Colin Donnell, the actor who plays Tommy, played his dramatic material th this episode really well, and I look forward to seeing what becomes of his character in future e episodes. Tommy also discovers Oliver's secret in this episode which was really surprising and added a nice twist but I look forward to seeing how the characters will change in light of this reveal. And I should also like to point out that Tommy and Merlin's dynamics are very similar to Sam Raimi's Green Goblin. Like Tommy is very much the Harry Osborne and Merlin is the... Merlin is Green Goblin, the original Green Goblin, who I have completely forgotten what the... what, what his name is. We, we also see now why Moira views Merlin as such a big threat. Merlin... Merlin's ideals are dangerous, and he has the power and the will to carry it through to the end. His words that inspire change and fixing his city seem to also um, inspire China White in a very, very brief shot. And I reckon that was what was going through China White's brain at that, um, in that scene. Again, this episode brings back China White and Deadshot. 
for this episode. Um, Deadshot is now retired because of Oliver's um, attack on him. And the and China White and Deadshot both have actual talking scenes this um, episode that revealed a little of of what being a mercenary in the DC universe is like. And I really enjoyed um, more of the mercenary stories coming up. Deadshot goes through a costume change in this episode that I thought was less cooler than the look that he had in episode 3. In episode 3, Deadshot seemed to have um, the Arkham City look going on. In this episode, he didn't really have that, which I was sort of sad about. However, that being said, it was a great seeing Deadshot return and China White's character being expanded upon. The flashbacks this episode were brief. However, we saw more of Oliver and Slade's dynamic in this episode. And also what the mysterious benefactor um, that we heard last episode, I think, operation might be on the island. However, we are offering some big developments in future episodes regarding the flashbacks. Finally, we see Laurel's mother, played by Alex, Alex Kingston, who also appeared in Doctor Who as Riversong. So, yeah. She appears in the episode, which was a little surprising, but should provide Laurel with some interesting story regarding her sister. We also get more Black Canary references this episode regarding Laurel's sister and a Black Canary bird. Building towards the Black Canary character we shall hopefully see next season. We also get to see a wider DC universe being expanded upon in this episode. We get to see um, Bloodhaven briefly. And we also um, get a mention of Nada Pabet. A mystical city in the mountains of Tibet. We also get vague hints about a bigger villain for both the present for both the present day characters and the past characters, and I'm theorizing that this villain connects to both the present day story and the past story, building towards something much bigger for arrow. So that's my review for this episode done. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already um, for more